Hi guys, honestly, it's my privilege to do this effect. Today's video inspired by Harry Potter, as he said, Specto! Hi again, this is Dyson, it's my pleasure to be here. Okay, this video inspired by this scene of my favorite movie, Harry Potter. In this scene, Professor Snape using his clock to disappearing as you can see so it's been a while i'm trying to do this honestly it's dream come true so and also in uh, end of this video i have a challenge for you so stay tuned for that okay first let's import our fx character here okay and let me load this file okay uh, i download this from miximo okay now uh, let's bring the animation by deform a node or bone deform sorry so we have this animation as you can see so we need this animation about here okay but first let me uh, reduce the speed of this animation okay now uh, yeah that will be cool for now so let's create three time node and Let's freeze the rest of the animation here. Okay, we're gonna specify the target frame here and the rest of animation will be frozen. Okay, now let's create our clock here using grid object. Let me create a grid here. Okay, and let me activate that. I need to uh, scale up this character a little bit let me create transform here and yeah maybe 1.6 is good and let me adjust our grid and maybe a little bit segment and now let's create transform and place this grid behind our character here nice and yeah maybe here be careful uh, the grid must not touch our character and let's go to grid now and let's go to top view and let's select our point here and let me select these lines little quick okay and this and this and maybe this and let's hit delete okay this will be our clock here and it will be interesting when we activate the simulation okay now let's create a volume cloth constraint nice and let me connect this okay we'll leave uh, the setting by default and let's create volume solver here and let's enable ground plane and let's play and see what we have here okay that's not bad for first attempt okay now let's create attach the geometry to attach this grid to our character okay attach to geometry constraint and that's good for now and let's connect the third input to our character here okay that's nice and now let's play and see what we have so it's not bad but we have this weird effect here and we're gonna uh, solve this okay that's because the attached to geometry is uh, activated to all these objects so we're gonna create group here to uh, the group is uh, for our grid and let's rename that and let's check this and let me select these polygons here and let's hit enter okay so and now let's assign this group to attach to geometry so now the grid is just building the constraint for this polygon here but as you can see we have this issue here our character need a group too so the whole geometry is not stick to it so let's create group here and group so and let me rename that so that's cool okay let's 
select this and for instance this polygon will be okay and let's hit enter and now let's assign this group here but first let me assign this object here and this group and now as you can see this what what we need now and let's play and see what we have now so let me show you here and let me merge these guys together see them clearly okay let's play and see what we have here okay that's first step okay if you're enjoying this video please hit the like button and subscribe for more content and help us the channel to grow and if you want to project file and awesome stuff please support me on my patreon so and if you want to uh, support our community to grow please check my nft page here i have an awesome offer for you so back to the video now we need this cloth or this grid to be growth or expand by this setting of stretch and rest length scale if we increase this parameter as you can see the grid will expand here okay maybe a little bit more free and as you can see we have a larger cloth here okay maybe 2.5 here will be good so let's play and yeah that's awesome for now so we need a force by this direction okay first let's create bezier curve here sorry bezier curve or curve bezier okay and let's hit manipulate tools and let me draw this little quick here and let me adjust that so that's here will be good now okay you can draw your curve as you desire so and let me create an all and name it c underline force for instance and now let's go uh, to vellum solver on this force output as you can see we need to create pop curve force here nice and let's select our geometry or our curve here okay that's cool as you can see this guide object showed us uh, the direction and let's make this 10 for now and yeah that's I guess decent for now let's play and see what we get now okay let's play okay that's not bad and let's create pop force for a uh, variation or noise force let's make that 10 and let's play so that's good for now let's proceed now let's dive in in pop curve force and let's see what we have here okay let's go to vellum solver now and this pop force as you can see is not uh, adjusting properly so let me adjust this curve and by this one we're gonna tell the pop force to enable this force before the jump okay as you can see we succeeded but we have an issue with the force is the force is too much so uh, let's uh, change the max influence and see what we have here we expanding the area of this force we can limit this by uh, decreasing this max influence parameter now let's decrease this one the orbit and the suction okay that's not bad so i'm gonna increase the follow scale here okay that's not bad so another parameter is so important here let's go to vellum cloth and change this bendiness here let's increase that and see what we have here okay that's better as you can see this effect is about the camera position so we need the clock is cover our character as you can see to hide uh, to help us to hide our character now so the, ca the camera is good now so let's 
go to pop force and let's uh, use this expression to enable the force between one and maybe 26 or 25 frame so the rest will be without a pop curve force okay now we're gonna hide our character in a specific frame before that let's go to cloth and increase this rest length scale to expand the cloth more here we need this cloth to cover our character and that's good for now so now let's create a bounding node or bound node here okay that will represent the bounding box of our character so let's change that to sphere and let's create point group here and let's connect the second input to our bound node here and now let's rename that and let's enable bounding option here and change that to point so we need a delete node and let's change that to point and delete not or non selected here okay and let me show you here the delete operation will uh, begin on this frame and let's uh, adjust this lower pending and upper pending here so as you can see this idea is so simple we're gonna delete our geometry before the cloak or this cloth here so as you can see I'm gonna keyframe that and to appear more convenient here I guess yeah we need the feet now okay the feet will be deleted now let me adjust this okay hey maybe we need more so yeah that will be awesome and hit the keyframe now we're gonna switch our collision object in a specific frame uh, maybe in this frame okay let me show you the collision object the blue one so that's the collision object our character so let's create switch node here nice and a null node now so now we're gonna uh, use this uh, expression okay and this uh, specific frame we're gonna switch our uh, geometry or collision geometry as you can see the switch is successfully done and that's necessary for our effect okay now we're gonna animate this uh, source or our character here we're gonna use this node here and let me animate this so rough okay maybe this one a keyframe and let me animate this and using this curves now so okay maybe here and yeah that's good now maybe here so this we're gonna use this animation you can use any animation you desire so uh, the speed or the animation is so important here and as you can see it's not bad for now okay yeah that's cool so this is the result now let's go to our our vellum solver and this pop force we're gonna increase that and enable this pop force after the pop curve force by this expression okay and let's play so as you can see the cloth is more convenient now so now let me complete our animation here okay maybe this yeah it's not bad okay that's cool and now let's see what we have here and that's not bad at all but it's awesome okay now we're gonna have a final touch to our simulation 
as you can see this cloth is not good here that's because we need to character it to be beneath our ground plane here so let's do that the cloth will be follow her and let's play and see if the cloth is stick on the ground or not so I guess that's good or better so as you can see this effect depend on the animation and this pop force and pop curve force and do not forget a vellum cloth here and the bendiness and rest length scale for expanding the a cloth here okay as you can see the bendiness is so important here and that's awesome I have a some test I to show you and this one so I love this one you can have a more uh, or different look from this one Okay, if you're interested, I challenge you to create reverse version of this effect. Let's suppose we have this cloth here and then our character will be appearing as you can see. So I will create instruction in the description. So I guess that's it. I hope you enjoyed this one and peace out.